Thank you, John, and thank you, Frank. Uh, Frank, real quick on that. Um, with that being a uh, conflict of interest, so to speak, uh, could not the judge and the uh, solicitor and prosecutor actually be, um, you could file a malicious prosecution case or mention that to the uh, Secretary of State? Absolutely. Look, what we haven't done is we haven't used, this is the thing that I, you know, tonight hopefully the theme is there is remedy in the system. We've just got to get ourselves organised on it. And it's why it's, you know, one of the, if you read this brief, one of the biggest dis dismissals they make against the quote unquote truth movement is that they say people in the truth movement do not take advantage of the remedy in the system and then claim there is no remedy. And you know, they're half right. I mean, and we're kind of half wrong because we don't, traditionally, you think about it, so many people, how many times have people never taken up appeals because they saw the appeals never work this, or, or you can't represent yourself in an appeal. So in a sense, we, we, there's been this kind of defeatist thing. The, 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 what we're looking to do now is at all times that we come as intelligent, competent, knowledgeable um, uh, people and that we use all the remedies available in their system and that when they don't follow those remedies, we again use it against them. So, yeah, Terry, you're absolutely spot on. You're 100% spot on that there is all these things that we should be doing that we're not with court cases. Yes, well, it's worth looking into as part of the remedy and, and make actually the law work for us, even even through what we're doing, you know, what you're doing with One Heaven and Acadia as well. So um, a better way has been hanging on here with the question for a while, and you're unmuted. So, Frank, can we get to a better way? Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hi, thank you all. Um, yes, my question is concerning the right of occupation and possession. Now, I'm yeah. noticing that on <clears throat> that, well, it has this different step where it says claim. And those are the documents, I guess, that are not um, completed, such as a request for discovery of documents for defense and request for response to inter interrogatories for defense. Now, is that um, claim section, is that something that, has, that needs to get done? Um, of yes, course, it I is. Am, and I'm, 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 I'm terribly yeah, I'm terribly, I'm terribly sorry that, that, that those sections haven't been completed because we've, the work on it, the executor, I mean, this sounds as an excuse, and I know it's an excuse, no, it's and I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I am working as hard as I can. I know. Um, I know. But, but yes, those sections desperately need to be completed um, so that you can follow each of the steps and, and know how to approach the discovery and how to approach the interrogatories. Um, but in light of what we're doing, um, I'm, I'm really hoping to have those up. I mean, it's the same as the writs. I mean... There's a question tonight, you know, is the habeas corpus ready? No, it's not ready, but um, absolutely looking at trying to get these things up in, in, in the short order in the next few days. And uh, it's just been a volume of work. So, I I, I, yes. And I do have one more question about that also. Now, um, under the um, Certificate of Bacon Possession and Certificate of Serving Title, it states that, yes. um, I mean, my question is, um, do the witnesses have to be blood relatives? It does not say that. It only says no. that, um, it's a trust. We need a trust recipient number. The members, a member's trust recipient number. That's right. They don't have to be blood witnesses. And oh, okay. I, I'm, I, I'm also aware that that um, you know the dreaded blood seal uh, only applies to certain documents, and it only really applies for a little bit longer. I mean, beyond the end of this year, we, you know, we're really not going to be doing blood seals. Um, well, we don't permit them anyway. It's, it's the end of concept of blood seals. But uh, yes, they don't have to be blood relatives that are your witnesses. No, they don't have to be. Okay. 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 And one more quick question. I'm sorry. Mm. Okay. Um, now, no, I, was, that's fine. I was the one that um, went through the the, um, the first section with the um, claiming the tenancy. Now, in doing yes. that, I did not go through the part where it does the claim. So now I'm going yep. into the appeals part. 
So I still need yep. to follow through on all of those steps, like the deed, the claim, the hearing, even though I didn't complete, like, the claim in the um, right of tenancy. Is that correct? Yes, yeah. What's going to happen is, and, and what the section is designed to do, is people are going to come to this information at different stages of the process. Either they're for the foreclosure and lost, or they're about to start a foreclosure, or, you know, it's going to be at different stages. And what I'm tr trying to do here is, is provide a framework where whatever level and whatever stage you're at, you can go in and see how to recover a position based on where you are. Yeah? Okay, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay, well, thanks a lot for your time. No, well, good on you, and, and, and best of luck with what you're doing. Great. Uh, Frank, we have, uh, if you have a little bit of more time, we, we have just one or two other callers on the phone. We could wrap it yeah. up with those two questions. Absolutely. Great. All right, we'll get to uh, Roshan first. Hi, right, Frank. Hello? Yeah. Uh, I just had a couple questions. It was mentioned earlier, uh, somebody asked how many trusts are there. And uh, I've been through this for quite some time. I just had a question. Uh, they use, I'm in Washington, and they use revised code of Washington. Could this be the terms of the trust? The rules and regulations? Yeah, look, I think um, I think you might be onto something that there are uniform codes within uh, the District of Columbia that apply to the administration of um, the various trusts that they are operating. Cons particularly considering the function of the of DC is, of course, the the giant treasury, where you know the trusts are supposedly housed. So I would. Um, uh, I think you're onto something there that it's worth viewing. Uh, so it's not just the laws that they're that we're looking at, but we're trying to also understand the foundation because by understanding the foundation, we wanted to see the progress of uh, how they evolved and morphed things. And then, of course, the other thing which we're dealing with tonight is how to deal with a uh, bunch of people that are well out of control. So in some cases, disqualification, in other cases, revocation of powers of attorney. So it's all part of it. But the short answer is yes. I think you'll find that that uh, a number of acts like that, a number of um, rules and regulations centralised from Washington is going to be, um, particularly under the USC, is going to end up being your uniform trust uh uh, rules and regulations for all these different types of trusts. Yes. Well, that, that's uh, just brief. Why I say this, uh, I've researched for quite some time, but uh, just you know, years ago, going through case law stuff like this, the United States is born jurisdiction for the states, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you yep. that. Then, even in their code, they refer to the state as an instrumentality or agency in the United States. So it's just which, you know, the District of Columbia being part of the Vatican or Roman cult, whatever. It's like just a yeah. stair step down. And I run across what they call the Massachusetts Trust, which was in their code. And uh, it talks about unincorporated associations, which in my mind, is referring back to bar associations be allowed to do business in the state. And at the end of it, it's only like four or five pages. It yeah. actually refers to the Secretary of State, the Department of Licensing, and the Director of Revenue to enforce all revenue agencies. So I, I, that's the yeah. question I had, because it appears to me there are terms of the trust right in front of our eyes, they call law, which could be trust law. Which we well, I'll give, give an example, I'll give, give an example where we've kind of missed things. You go across to Delaware, right? You've got 1707, you've got, you've got um, Pennsylvania, Delaware, and District of Columbia. They're the three. They're the three key ones. So Philadelphia, you end up having the King's Bench, so you end up having powers of the Rota, the highest court. 
then you end up having in Delaware the Chancery. But you go and look at the, the constitutions of Delaware, um, people don't realise is that, that through Delaware there was a new charter formed right across the states. And people go and look at the Virginia Charter and they, get, they end up finding you know, a, a, the road ends. But it's worth going viewing the Delaware Constitution because it has an extraordinary amount of information there in plain sight. Delaware basically doesn't hide anything. And a lot of the structures we're talking about and to look for are literally hidden in plain sight in Delaware. They make, they make no uh, hiding of it. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's getting a handle on, on how things are put together. It's taken time, but I, I have a feeling the approach we're taking and the, and the feedback people are taking is positive, that taking a competence and honourable and non-adversarial approach in staying in honour and not allowing them to 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 use non-response or what they would claim as you know belligerent behaviour against us, and um, to 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 focus, which we're doing at the moment, on um, getting on top of trust law. And now that we know that all court matters is the sacrament of penance, this is this has been a historic bedrock for us to keep our focus and not be distracted because there's a lot to learn and it's easy to be distracted. So thanks for your feedback and thanks for your questions. Okay. I just... All right. Thank you. We have one more from North New Jersey. Frank, can we wrap up with that? Yep. All right. North New Jersey. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, New Jersey. Now. Hello. Okay, how are you? As a point of information, Good. Richard Fine's site is fulldisclosure.net. Excellent. Thank you for that. Wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and you can put a forward slash blogs, forward slash numeral nine, numeral six, dot PHP. Wonderful. Very, very and good. we'll see if uh, Gerald can get that also put on the uh, university website. Okay, thank you for the work you do. I appreciate it. No, thank you. And, and Terry, before we wrap up, there was just one question that was put on uh, the, the chat about the uh, revocation of guardianship and power of attorney. Yes. Yes. I want, to get, I want to get that up quick, smart, as a document that goes with the appointment of executor. Absolutely. It's a missing document. We want to get up because... You heard tonight, this is one of the games they're playing over and over again. And yes, even though we do it through the EDP process, we need one that's suitable just for the straight-up executive process. Yeah. All right, great. Thank you, Frank. Uh, did you have any closing, anything else to close with? Or we'll just get well, back well, just, I, I want to thank... I just want to thank everyone. And uh, by the way, I want to thank, too, uh, you, Terry. It was great to have you host tonight. And I appreciate everyone that's that's helping in, in everything you're doing. I, I I really appreciate people's approach to this and that maturity to this and 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 the excitement of actually us becoming competent and, and also approaching this as honourable. I would say this: anything that is a mistake, I I will admit it and we will fix it. It's a model at the end of the day. So again, you know, I thank everyone who's spread, everyone who's involved in this and spreading the message, and I really look forward to us continuing to get some traction to the road on this and, and see that people are getting some real remedy. Because at the end of the day, we're not doing this for, as an academic exercise. We're doing this because people are under attack and need help. And I hope people are finding in this process that uh, their spirit is supported that uh, they find remedy in their in their lives and that they're not alone. So thanks again, Terry, and thank you all for the questions tonight. Well, thank you, Frank, and uh, it was a great call tonight, and thank you for the uh, extra time. I know we went over, and uh, thank you, everyone, for participating and uh, giving your great questions. And I know all of you appreciate Frank's extra time tonight and um, as he continues on with uh, much more work and getting those documents ready for everyone. So thank you again, Frank, and we'll see everyone next week.